and welcome to Simple Java GUI Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you the absolute basics you need to make a Java GUI app. And this app is going to be a temperature converter where we take Celsius and convert it to Fahrenheit or and or Fahrenheit and convert it to Celsius. So a quick shout out to my members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Couldn't do it without you guys. Um, and if anybody's interested in joining, please click the join button or subscribe below. So let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be creating a very simple app uh, where we convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. So you can see here we've got um, some labels, a label that says Celsius. We've got a label that says Fahrenheit. We've got a little text box that's, a, that's where we're going to put our Celsius. We've got a text box where we're going to put our Fahrenheit. And we've got a couple buttons. So one button for calculating Celsius to Fahrenheit and one button for calculating Fahrenheit to Celsius. And all of these elements are inside of something called a frame, and I've called that FRM main. And I'll come back to this uh, in a little bit. So some of the coding concepts we're going to be looking at here is Java Swing, which is uh, lets us make GUIs in Java. Um, the different UI components, which I just talked about, buttons, labels, um, and text fields, and also frames. We're going to be using static variables and methods. We're going to be using something called an action listener and action event. And then we'll be using the double classes uh, parse double method. Now, I designed this tutorial for my students that I'm currently teaching in AP Computer Science. And they've been doing Java for a couple months. So I'm trying to stick to things that they know and that they know how to do. Okay. So going back to the app, so let's take a look at this. If you haven't done GUI programming before, um, I'll try and keep it simple for you. So basically, a GUI is a graphical user interface. And you can see here we've got a window, and in this particular window we've got a frame, and this frame we've called FRM main. So that's like kind of the background. That's where we're going to put everything into. Now again, GUI stuff can get very, very complex. I'm keeping this as simple as humanly possible. So GUIs are made up of different UI elements. In this case, we've got labels, we've got text fields, and we've got buttons. So basically, we need to create those labels. We need to create the text fields. We need to create the buttons. And just kind of tie it all together with a little bit of code. Okay. Now, notice the names that I've used. So the labels, I started with LBL. And with the text, uh, the text fields, I started with text. The buttons, I started with BTN. Now, I don't have to do it that way. But it just makes sense to me. And it's very, very clear, I think, what each thing is and probably gives you a very good idea of what each thing does. Um, students always just want to call it like button A, button B, and be a little bit lazy like that, uh, but it causes problems later when you're trying to debug your code. So proper naming is just super duper important. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll come back to this from time to time. Let's go ahead and get started on the code. So I'm going to go over to my ID, which ID, uh, text editor which I use something called Genie. Feel free to use whatever you want, um, but I like Genie, it's free, it's open source. Check it out if you get a chance. Now, I've already gone ahead and typed the class, and this is class temperature converter, and I've saved it as temperature converter.java, so that has to match. I've made my main method, and so if this does not look familiar to you, probably this is not the right tutorial for you. Um, go start somewhere else. But uh, if it does look good to you, First thing we're going to do is we're going to need to import some classes. So I'm going to go ahead and import Java x.swing. I'm going to put an asterisk here. If you haven't seen the asterisk, basically what this means is import all of the different classes under Java x.swing. Okay. Now we could import them one by one if we knew exactly what we we're going to use. And if you're using an ID like IntelliJ, It'll actually kind of figure all that out for you. Um, you hit, I think, Alt Enter, and it does some things automatically. Uh, but anyway, I'm using Genie. I'm trying to keep it simple, so let's stick with that. I'm also going to use import uh, uh, java.awt.event and asterisk semicolon. And awt is the All Windows Toolkit. I think it's the original GUI. I don't know, the original GUI uh, library or whatever you want to call it here. 
for Java, but I think that was replaced by Swing. Don't don't quote me on that though. Uh, it's been a while since I studied this stuff. And then I'm going to do Java.awt. Asterisk. And again, if you don't understand every single little detail, don't don't stress over it. This is just kind of a you know kind of a get you started kind of thing. So I've imported all of the various classes that I'm going to need for this particular project. So let me go back real quick and take a look at what the app is going to look like. So as a reminder, we need two labels, we need two text fields, we need two buttons, and we need one frame. Okay, so we need to create those things uh, in our Java app. So let's go back and give it a shot. So now watch where I do this. If you haven't seen this style before, this might be a little confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to declare the GUI elements. Now, as I mentioned, we have a frame. So I'm going to put public static. So right now we're using all static methods and all static variables. Now again, you know, Java, you're supposed to do things a bit more object oriented style. Uh, I'm going to stick to this again because I think it's easier for my students than I'm teaching. We, we haven't quite gotten to those things yet and I think I think everybody will find this a lot easier. Um, so I'm going to make a JFrame. This is a JFrame object and I called it FRM main. Okay. I also have, as I mentioned before, a J label and that one is LBL Celsius. I have public static and I need a J text field. Uh, be careful with the, the capitalization and that's going to be text Celsius. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to need another public static J label. Uh, I spelled that wrong, I can see that. Label fair and height. Now again, you could just use capital F, like label F. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, I tend to type things out just because I know later on things can get very confusing if you don't do that. And again, J text field, text fair and height. And I think we need a couple buttons too. So public static um, J button, button calculate uh, C2F and public static J button, button calculate F2C. Okay. So what we've done is inside my temperature converter class, um, I have gone ahead and created basically null objects for the frame, the label, the text fields, well, I say both the labels, both text fields, and both buttons. Okay. So then later what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use those. Okay, so now, again, this is outside of public static void main. This is just before, but inside the class. The imports are up here. Okay, so what I need to do is I first need to go ahead and create the frame. So let's go ahead and go back to the app preview. So this is going to be our frame. Now we can't actually see the title thing here because I kind of shrank it down, um, but we need to create that first. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my code and I'm going to go ahead and type it in here. Let's give it a shot. So the first thing is set up the frame. Now I've already instantiated it up here, but I got to actually, I should say declare it, I haven't instantiated it really. Um, so I need to add an actual J frame. So frm main equals new J frame. Note the capitalization again, and I'm going to call this uh, temperature converter by we'll put at Tokyo EdTech. That's me. EdTech. Now we're not actually going to really see that part. Um, and I'm going to go ahead frm main dot set size, and I'm going to make it 150 by 200 pixels. Now your computer might be a little different. I don't know quite know how that works, but you can play around with the numbers, and we can resize it later. I'm going to do form or frame main dot set layout. And the layout thing gets a little complicated. Um, so I'm just going to use what's called a flow layout. And this kind of automatically places the elements for you. And you'll, you'll see what happens in a minute, well, in a couple minutes. And notice there's an extra set of parentheses here. And so new flow layout. 
Okay, so I've set up the frame. So let me go ahead and compile that and see what happens. It's compiled, and I'm going to run it and see what happens. Okay, absolutely nothing should have happened. Okay, so this is kind of what I expected. Um, the program ran, and then it exited itself. Okay, so I think we're missing a line, and that line is going to go actually at the very bottom. I'm going to put that at the bottom of this program. I don't know if it has to go at the bottom of the program, but that's where I have it. And okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, make the frame visible. So I'm going to go ahead and do frame main dot set visible to true. And I think this will do what we want it to do. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And I'm going to go ahead and boom. And there is our window. Okay, now if I can make this wide, you can see where it says temperature converter by Tokyo EdTech. Um, but it started out, you know, something like that uh, because we set this to 150 by 200. So you can set it to whatever size, you know, you're comfortable with. And you'll see as we start adding these different elements um, what things will look like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that and get out of there. And hopefully... Okay. Now, if you're using Genie, I had to go up and down here and hit, uh, I think, Control-Z and then Enter and so I can keep working on this. Okay. So what we need to do now is just to start adding our different elements. Okay. So here we go. Let's, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to go ahead and here, create GUI elements. And let's just do one together real quick. So I'm going to do label Celsius equals new J label label and it's going to say cell celsius celsius colon quote semicolon okay so meant again remember up here i've already declared it okay now i'm actually instantiating it giving it you know giving it i don't know giving it some code i don't know making it real i'm not quite sure how to say it um and i've gone ahead and created the gui elements so let's go ahead and compile this and run it and you'll notice that you don't see anything and this is, this is to be expected, okay? So even though we've created it, now notice down here again, if you're using Genie, I gotta hit, I gotta hit Control Z, then Enter, and this should be white. Um, it's a little bit of, a little bit of an extra step for this because we have a little gooey thing running. There's something, there's another step I have to do to get this to work, okay? So what I gotta do is, before I make the frame visible, I'm gonna go ahead and Add the GUI element elements to the frame. So I'm going to type frame main dot add label Celsius. I'm going to put them in the order that I want them to appear. Okay. So let's go ahead and test that. And there you go. So there is our first GUI element. So let me just kind of go back and review that because that's that's the first part of it. That's that's setting up the GUI. So if I go back to the app preview here, um, so what we've done is we've created the form, or the frame, excuse me. We've added one label, and we've made the frame visible. Okay. So probably what I should have done is I probably shouldn't have added these parts first. I should have just done this by itself. Um, anyway, live and learn. But I think you get the idea. So the first thing you did was we set up the frame, okay? Because everything that we create after that's got to go into that frame. Okay, oops, let me go back. Sorry, I was wrong screen there. Um, so sorry, let me go back and explain what I just said again. So basically, you know, we created the elements. I probably should have just done this part first and then done it one at a time. But anyway, um, I didn't. So here we are. And uh, so. First thing is we set up the frame because everything goes into that frame. Okay, so I made a new uh, J frame and it's temperature converter. This is the title that goes into the window. And then I set the size in pixels. And then I set this layout thing. Again, there are other, there are other layouts. It gets very complicated. But for now, let's just use the flow thingy because it's, it's easy. Then I created my first GUI element, which was my label Celsius. And I added that label to the frame. And then, of course, I made the frame visible, and then we could see it. Okay. So if we go back to the app preview, 
next thing up is my text Celsius, then label Fahrenheit, then text Fahrenheit, then button and button. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that part real quick and I'll, I'll talk through it, but basically it's pretty straightforward. Um, so next up is text Celsius equals and it's new J. I think it is text. Uh, what is it? Sorry, new J text field. And now the number I'm going to put here, actually, let's do 10. Okay, is the number of columns of that text field. So I'm going to do form main dot add text Celsius. So I'm just going to go ahead. I forgot to close this. Hit enter. Compile and run it. And now I've got this cool little text box. Okay. Now 10 is the number of columns. So let's see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, it was supposed to be 10 columns, but oh well, they gave us a few extra. I'm not going to complain. Uh, but 10 is supposedly the number of columns in the text field. But <laughs> who knows? Anyway, we'll leave it like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go ahead and do my next couple labels or my next label, my next text field. And this is going to be Fahrenheit. And again, if I'm going too fast, just, you know, pause it, rewind. But notice how I'm hoping you notice that these consistent names uh, make things a little bit easier. So, so once I get one thing working, then I can just go ahead and copy it and you know make make the changes I need. Now students have this annoying tendency to I'm sorry to say that, but they have this annoying tendency to just go ahead and type everything through and then try to fix it. But that's a bad idea because if you do it step by step, then you know exactly where the problem is. So I'm going to compile that and run it, and now I've got my two labels. I've got my two text fields. All right, so we are clearly making progress, which makes me happy. Um, so the next thing we need is our buttons. And we got what? We got, let's see here. So it's button convert. I think it, the first one was C2F. Did I spell it wrong? Equals new J button. And this is going to be what the button says. So convert. C to F, and then button convert F to C equals new J button convert F to C. And then down here, just like we did for main or frame main dot add uh, button convert C to F and for main dot add button convert it's calculate that's why I was wondering why it wasn't popping up there so calculate I should have made a convert shouldn't I um, calculate I know people are always watching like oh I knew I knew what you, you were doing wrong before you knew yeah probably um, it's hard to talk and type trust me um, F to C. All right, so let's go ahead and compile that, run it, and here we go. So you can see already we've got, you know, not decent looking. Now watch what happens when I change the size here. This is what I was talking about, the flow layout. So as I give it more space, it automatically moves the elements around. So if you prefer like this style, a more horizontal looking thing, you can do it that way. Um, that way it's nice, you can see the, 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 the title here. Or I prefer like a more vertical alignment myself. Um, and you can just leave it like that. It's really up to you. Okay. So now if I click the button, of course, nothing happens. Okay. But at this point, you should have a working GUI, or at least a functioning GUI, I should say. And now it gets kind of interesting. Um, now, if you're coming from, say, a JavaScript background where you just basically you can just you know, add a callback. It's very, very simple. Uh, or if you're coming from something like Python with TK enter, it's very, very simple just to add a function to something. If you're coming or if you're doing like JavaScript with HTML, 
use the on click thing. Um, there's quite, it's very, very simple to do. Of course, Java, I, God help me, I don't know why. It's really complicated to do this. Um, so I'm going to walk you through this. And this is what I was up at three o'clock this morning uh, working on. Um, so, anyway, so I've got my button calculate C2F. So I'm going to put this here. I don't have to put it here, but it just seems like it's logical. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to add the listener, um, listener for this particular button. So watch what I do. So we put the name calculate C2F dot add action listener and here's how I'm going to do this now this is where it gets weird so new action listener parentheses okay now be careful this is a brace or a left brace left brace these are parentheses and in here, I'm going to put public void action performed action event E. And then now I'm just going to kind of close all this stuff up so I know that I've gotten this. Okay. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and compile it and just, just to make sure it's working. Okay, it didn't it didn't compile because I forgot the semicolon here at the end. I think that's what I need. Um, yeah, I think that's what I need. Let's check that one more time. Three errors. Okay, Java line thirty eight. Button action listener. Oh, I know what I did wrong. This I knew that was weird. Sorry about that. This is a parenthesis and this is a parenthesis. And yeah, I think that's right. There we go. Okay, so I do apologize for that. So it is parenthesis, parenthesis, <laughs> brace, 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 brace. Um, yeah, that's Java for you. Anyway, so it compiles. Now what we want to happen, so in here is where we're going to convert C to F. Okay, so the code's going to go in here. Now, at this point, I could make another static method, put the method down here, and do everything inside the method. Um, the reason I'm not doing that is because I haven't done methods with my students. Um, they know how to use them, they know how to call them, but they don't know how to write them yet. So I'm going to do it this way. Now, think about what we have here. So if I save that, I'm going to go back to my app preview. So I've got, so basically what I'm gonna do is so I'm gonna put like 100 in here in this, this uh, Celsius uh, text box here, okay? So I'm gonna put 100 in there. So I need to pull this information out of there. I need to pull the information out of that. Then I need to convert it to Fahrenheit. Now a couple things. When I pull it out of here, it is actually a string. So I've gotta convert that string to a double. So now this is just kind of some, this is more or less kind of standard Java, I guess you'd say. Um, so I'm gonna make a string and I'm gonna call this C, sorry, C text. Didn't have to call that, call it that, but that, that kind of made sense to me. And this is coming from the text Celsius and it is get text like that. So whatever I've typed into that box, is going to be assigned to this variable. So I need this to be C Celsius. So I'm going to use double dot parse double C text. So in my example here in the app preview, I've got 100 in that box. So if I go back to my code, so C text is going to be 100 but a string. This will change it from 100 string to 100.0. Now I just need to use the formula, and I had to Google this. So Fahrenheit equals, it's uh, C times nine divided by five, 
plus 32. And now the last step is text Fahrenheit set text string dot value of F because I'm setting the text of the Fahrenheit uh, text box okay. and it's got to be a string so this is a double so I'm going to take the, the value let me get rid of that I'm going to take the value of F whatever it's converted to and put change it to a string put that string into text Fahrenheit and I'll pause that if you're having trouble, but hopefully that should make some sense. So I'm going to go ahead and compile it, and I'm going to test it. Okay, so up here I'm going to go ahead and put 100, and I'm going to hit convert C to F. It should be 212.0, and boom, there we go. Okay, so let me just kind of explain what happened there one more time. So, so for button calculate C to F, we've added what's called an action listener. And this is basically just tells Java, hey, listen for events like where the user, in this case, clicks on this button. Okay, so it's a new action listener. And then we have this method in here called action performed. Now, this action event E thing is kind of hard to explain, but basically, I'm going to put it like this is passed to that function. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, we can pull information out of this, but just, just copy it as it is. And then here, this is where we actually pull information out of our GUI. So the value that's here, the text that's here, we put it into C text. We convert that to a double, and we call it C. Then we just create a new double called F for Fahrenheit. We convert it using the formula, convert it back to a string, and then set the text in this box to the value of f and that is the magic of GUIs okay which is pretty cool I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that now at this point what I would recommend that you do is to try to do the same thing for Fahrenheit to Celsius now again this is one of those things again I tell my students all the time and they never listen to me <laughs> say get one working perfectly you notice how like even i screwed this up like this thing you know the balance has to be correct etc etc so you got this matches this this matches this this matches this this match and there's all kinds of things that have to be done so what i would do is i would just go ahead and because i know this works i would just go ahead and copy this and put it here and then just change what needs to be changed so this is going to be f to c now we're converting F to C in this case. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all this stuff because um, it's a little, little too easy to mess that one up. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and try to type my code. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So string F text, so in this case Fahrenheit text, equals text Fahrenheit dot get text. Okay. That pulls the text out of that text Fahrenheit uh, text box there then I need to convert that to a double so double Fahrenheit equals double dot parse double and it's going to be F text so that converts this text into a double then we have double Celsius C equals it's F minus 32 oops, times 5 divided by 9. And again, I don't need to put spaces in there. I just have this tendency to do that. I think it's easier to read. And then we take that result and put it back into text Celsius. So it's going to be text Celsius dot set text string dot value. Oh, remember, this is Java, so we have to convert everything ourselves. And again, watch the number of uh, parentheses here. I think that should do it. So let's go ahead and compile it. Let's see, kill this last one. And compile it. And run it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and type 212 and convert F to C. It gives me 100 Celsius. I'm going to hit that again. 
So basically, hitting these should not really change anything because they're converting back and forth to the same thing. Um, one thing I like to do as a test is negative 40. I convert that to Fahrenheit because they are the same. They, that's where they cross. And then you can see that works. So that is a GUI app in Java. So that took 30 minutes, a little over 30 minutes to explain that. Um, yeah, so that's that. So let's just take a quick look at the code again. So remember, we have to import these items. Okay. Uh, we have our class. We declare the GUI elements outside of public static void main. Okay. And again, I gave them names that made sense. You could do LBL capital C or text capital C, but this label and this text is really I think important so we know what each thing is because we end up having we can't have two things with the same name we can't have Celsius Celsius because the computer will get confused okay so then inside of our main method um, don't forget the static by the way uh, first thing is we set up the frame we created all of our GUI elements and again notice J label you should put the label in there the text field you need to put the size and again I'm not sure why it went over 10 but you know, hey, that's life. Um, I don't know everything, sorry. Um, I'm still kind of learning some of this stuff myself. Um, and the button also, this is the label that we see over here. Now this action listener thing is just, again, to my mind, it's just way over complicates things. Um, but I'm sure Java, the pe Java people have a very good reason for that. So again, you know, again, I'm sorry I messed it up initially, but do keep an eye on which symbols you're using here um, and here and here and make sure everything balances out and again do one make sure it works and then you can copy and paste for the second one okay and then at the, finally you have to add the GUI elements to the frame and then make the frame visible and again I don't know that the order of this maybe the action listeners could go later I don't think it really matters when you put it in but it seems to me this is kind of a logical thing we create the button then add the action listener so it's pretty cool. I mean, that was only 74 lines of code. Um, yeah, I like to put a lot of spaces in there to make it look nice, but you know, it's pretty short. Um, so I hope you see like the general kind of, you know, what you need to do, import, declare, you know, set it up, add the listeners, add the elements and make it visible. That's it. So I think given this knowledge, what you've done in this program, um, you can now basically take almost any input from the user do almost anything you want with it, and then output that back into another uh, another GUI element. So congratulations, you are now a GUI programmer. So hopefully, the, hopefully you enjoyed that, you learned something from that, and click, uh, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever. Keep on coding. Have a good one. Bye-bye.